everyone. My name is William McVicker, and uh, Peter Griffin and I uh, will be talking about Pixel 6 support on Android Mainline. So Pixel 6 has been supported on Android Mainline for two years now. And the goal of the project was to increase testing for uh, GKI with a real Android in-market device. This allows us to catch regressions uh, from upstream merges that come into Android Mainline before they are propagated to Android vendors. Um, it also increases Android-specific testing on real hardware that is uh, used in the market. Um, and since kernel version 5.10 and later, we've been um, using Pixel 6 for testing. So every GKI kernel change that is being made is being tested on Pixel 6 in pre-submit and in post-submit. Um, this also includes all the LTS merges that come in from upstream into the 5.10, 5.15, 6.1, and Android mainline branches. Those are all being tested on Pixel 6. This project also allows for kernel developers who are testing upstream patches from the list uh, to evaluate performance impacts, and it allows them to contribute to the discussion upstream. In addition to all the testing that we've added, um, we're also starting to lay the frameworks for in-market kernel upgrades. We found that you know, it's easier to maintain functionality and the performance incrementally for each uh, kernel release than to upgrade from one LTS release to the next. Um, this means that when you're bringing up your device, um, you can focus more on the changes on that specific kernel release instead of focusing on upgrading your drivers from an older LTS version to the LTS version that you want to upgrade to. So I dug up a list of changes that have either landed upstream or are currently being reviewed on the list um, that directly use Pixel 6 with Android Mainline to develop and test. So you may be familiar with these. Pixel um, has been doing some 16K support. Um, there's VM CPU Freak, proxy execution, a lot of PKVM development. Um, user fault D move operation, binder development, uh, in particular the new Rust implementation for binder, uh, multi-gen LRU, all these have leveraged the work that we have been doing to support Pixel 6 on the Android. One of the reasons you may pick Pixel 6 over the available AOSP development boards out there is um, that they lack certain hardware features that uh, you find on real phones. Um, in particular, you can test on a, an in-market device that has you know, a phone form factor. This means you can do thermal testing, performance testing of workloads that real users will be seeing in the field. And uh, we've been incrementally adding um, documentation that um, for this project. So you can now find um, at this first link um, the steps to build the Pixel kernel um, with the latest Android uh, mainline, um, as well as the second link is the link to download the source code. So now I'm going to hand this off to Peter, and he's going to talk a little bit more. Um, my name's Pete Griffin. I'm the um, Google Landing Team Tech Lead at Lenaro, working with William and Google on this project. Um, so the chart on the right there, uh, it shows the lag between when a Linux release is made by Linus Torvalds, and then uh, the, blue, the blue bars are how long it takes that to get merged into Android Mainline. So you can see, like, typically it's like a day or a couple of days, uh, and that means at that point, uh, that's running on Pixel 6, and all the drivers have been updated. Um, so we've kind of, there's at least 16 upstream bugs that we've detected by running uh, CTS, VTS, and all the testing that Betty talked about in her talk on real phone hardware. Um, 
But if you look at RC3, which is the red bar, you can see that um, there's a much bigger lag. So, you know, essentially we don't always have this testing. We lose a lot of the RC window uh, because we have to fix up the pixel drivers uh, and some of the other ACK stuff, uh, technical debt. So uh, if, if these drivers were baked into the kernel and, and they're already upstream, we'd be able to do a lot of this testing a little, little bit earlier uh, and hopefully get the, you know, detect and fix um, regressions earlier in the uh, RC process. So why, why upstream Pixel 6? Um, like Williams talked, like there's a lot of benefits with updating the downstream drivers with every kernel release. And Williams kind of talked about that already. Um, so there's, but if we upstream the SEC on the phone to Linux, then obviously all those drivers are baked into the kernel. Uh, so we don't have to have this uh, lag when a new kernel release comes out. We don't have to go and fix up all the drivers. We can start the testing um, earlier by uh, integrating the platform into services like LKFT and kernel CI. Um, we also have a phone form factor upstream kernel development platform, which is quite cool. Um, so you'll be able to just take the Linux release uh, and compile it and run it on your, on your phone. Uh, and there's like some technical debt in GKI that can't be upstream currently because it hasn't got a, a user in tree. Uh, and if this phone, if, if the SEC on the phone is uh, upstreamed, then we will have a user uh, and it will allow us to reduce some of that uh, technical debt as well. Uh, so this work started, um, the initial uh, patch series is on V3 um, on the mailing list and we have uh, sort of initial SOC and board support. So it's got clocks, uh, UR, watchdog, uh, enough to support to get to like a busy box uh, shell, basically. So yeah, depending on what you want to do at the moment, you could, you could go and get like 6.6 .6 version of the drivers publicly from AOSP um, with Android mainline and run it and have a full featured phone. Or you can take like, um, when these patches get merged, you'd be able to take just upstream kernel release, compile it, obviously have much more limited support at the moment, but that will improve over time. Uh, and the goal is as we upstream these drivers, we'll retire the sort of downstream forked versions in Android mainline, uh, and slowly more and more of the, the platform will be, will be upstreamed. So yeah, this is the kind of, technical discussion topic we wanted to get everyone's feedback on in the room. Um, so typically the Android phones have quite a few different, uh, like for a particular phone, there's a, couple, a bunch of different uh, variants before it reaches uh, mass production. And ideally we want to be able to boot all these using the upstream kernel. Uh, the patches we sent so far, we've just put like one DTB board file for the mass, mass production phone. Um, but typically there's, I think we, we counted up here just over the six series of six, six pro and six a, there's like 29 different, uh, board variants. Um, and we don't really want to have to add like a DTB for every single one of those in the kernel. Um, so the downstream solution that's being used at the moment is to have like a common DTB. Uh, and then we, and then it uses an overlay to uh, the bootloader applies that overlay depending on uh, the board, the specific board variant that it that it is, um, and that allows us to have like one DT image that has a couple of base DTBs and then like the 29 different overlays, say, uh, and we can package all that up together. So we'd like to have an upstream solution for this problem essentially, um, and I don't think one uh, exists today. Um, as I understand it with overlays currently like upstream expect the board overlay to be like a physical daughter board so I'm interested to get people's opinions on you know if we can do away with that concept and have an overlay as like a you know a board oh do we have the mic for seven um yeah so I am CC down it, but I haven't followed the email thread fully. Is the main contention is adding a property called board ID? Is that what, right? Because you're not doing anything in the kernel itself with these, right? Just that That's the bootloader is going to look at this board ID thing to figure out which overlay to apply. Yeah, so 
I mean, downstream uses a board ID. Um, and I know like there's some upstream Qualcomm platforms that use a board ID and a MSM ID. Um, but the, the key feature is we want to be able to apply overlays to a common board DTP. But Whether you want to enable the bootloader to apply the overlay, even for an upstream kernel. That's what you're trying to do, right? Sorry. So you're trying to enable the bootloader to apply the overlay. Yes. And to enable it, you need to have this board ID property. Yes. And that's the part you're trying to get. Okay. So yeah, I'm looking to get the room's feedback on uh, overlays um, to support. You have different a question board in variants. the chat. If you check the chat on the left hand side, there's a oh. question for you. Uh, well, is there not? Can you show me? Yeah. Um, Sumit, do you want to read it up? Oh, okay. uh, so Trilok says. Uh, Overlays we do are the DTB plus DTBO uh, and DTBO plus DTBO uh, at compile time in QC. DTBO plus DTBO is not supported upstream through DTC. So QC uses the board ID plus MSM ID and overlays gets complex. So compile time is better due to boot time constraints. I would not prefer the boot time resolutions. That's from Trilok at Qualcomm. Thank you. So I don't think there's a question. I, I don't think there's a question. I think uh, his view around your question of what would you prefer, his answer is that he would not prefer boot time resolution of uh, DT overlays. He would rather do a build time, compile compile time. Yeah. Are you saying we have a problem? Okay, I can see the. I know what we do because I wrote it. Don't use the thing you're using. No, we we do a, a build time check to make sure that the overlay actually applies to the DTP. Um, I think you probably develop some more patches. Um, I just want to say I would really like it, whatever solution we come up with. I'd really like it if we didn't put the metadata outside the DTBO. Um, it's really hard to track that metadata if it's living outside the DTBO itself. Um, you, know, you have to drag it around a bunch of images and figure out what you want to do with it. I think it just gets complicated. Um, no question, just a comment. <laughs> so we do do compile time um, application of the overlay to the DTB, but whenever we boot up, we allow the bootloader to select which overlay to use based on what hardware you're running. So the bootloader will read a register or a fuse that has this board ID and board revision in it. And then it will look up in the table to say, okay, uh, we're booting up with this specific hardware, pick this overlay, apply it to the SOC base DTB, and then continue with that um, device tree blow up. I think Qualcomm does that too, right? Who else has a question? What are the concerns you have between, say, shipping a bunch of overlays that get chosen at boot time versus shipping several like complete device trees that get chosen between at boot time? So as you can see here on the slide, if we did this just for Pixel 6, 6 Pro, and 6A, which all use the same SOC, they have slight variations between them. Uh, if you wanted to ship a single DTB image for um, each one of these three devices, then you will be using an additional 6.8 megabytes. Um, and the DTB right now is concatenated at the end of the boot uh, kernel, the kernel image. And so by having a single uh, base DTB um, for each of these devices, and then a separate overlay for each one to adjust the base DTB, you can save 6.8 6 megabytes. And if you extrapolate this to Pixel 7, 7 Pro, 7A, Pixel Fold, Pixel Tablet, th it starts like accumulating. And uh, obviously, the memory will start accumulating as well. And so we want to, as for a scalability point of view, be able to ship one device tree blob to all millions of devices out there um, and not have to have 12 different, and anything in Pixel 8 as well, 12 different images for all these different devices. Okay, we've only got one minute for this question. I actually, I, I agree that the overlay stuff sounds great. I'm a little curious if the 6.8 megs is compressed or uncompressed, because at least on Chrome OS, we do ship up probably far too many different revs of boards. It's very handy. 
and they do take up a lot of space, but they do at least get compressed. I think with like whatever something, some one of the really good compression algorithms, and it it becomes a lot less of an issue. So, okay, so you share for full DTP for every revision, right? But you yeah, in, I mean, it doesn't take up a lot of space in the source code because it's all a bunch of yeah. DTSIs and a bunch of you know include files. But yeah, they all get compiled, and we ship you know a whole pile of different versions and. It takes up some space, and you compress it, and it's not terrible. But yes, overlays would be better. Yeah, and what, uh, Christoph? Do you have any thoughts on overlays for uh, supporting board variants? We're going to have to switch over to uh, yeah. the, the next speaker. Sorry. <laughs> 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 I'll take silence to me. That's fine. Think of a hole.